Happy Wednesday, First Baptist family. It is a beautiful day here in Keysport, and I am in uh, the Sunday school classroom where I usually teach, at least I taught until uh, up in March, and uh, I've had a, a lot of interesting conversations in this room. Um, it's one of my very favorite things to do is to, to share the, the truth of the scriptures and the, the love of Jesus with other people who enjoy studying the Bible. It's uh, been a treat to do that, and it really has left a void in my life that I don't get to do that right now. But we do have uh, a number of Sunday school classes gathering. Danny's leading a group here in this room, which is S303. Uh, the Remnants class is meeting over in the Fellowship Hall. Lyle Elshai has a group down in room 202. Uh, beginning this week, Lori Way's class will be meeting in the room the Friendship class uses. And then we have a college group uh, a youth group, and then this group that Danny teaches. So we're, uh, we, we have a place for you if you want to come to Sunday school, if you are youth or above. We don't have children's Sunday school yet. Uh, we're monitoring what the schools are doing. And of course, if you're a parent or a grandparent, you're aware that the schools are starting in a virtual classroom next Monday. That means the children will be watching online. And so we're trying to monitor that and um, be aware of, of the right thing to do for our children and for you. We are uh, asking you just to come on to worship if you feel comfortable doing that. We're asking you to socially distance and to wear a mask. We're having a great time with our mask contest every Sunday. Just to let you know, we had about 70 people in first service last Sunday and we had 59 folks in second service. That was an increase over what we had in the second service the week before. So we're having a good, good little group of folks, but we would welcome you if you're comfortable. But if not, we encourage you to watch us online and so grateful all of us are for the way you're doing that, for the way you continue to be faithful in stewardship. It, it's just a gift. Well, I want to talk to you today about a, uh, Matthew chapter 10. And I want you to think if your life could be summarized with one phrase, what would it be? Well, the life of Judas is summarized in one phrase in Matthew chapter 10. And this is how he is described. Judas who betrayed the Lord. That is a terrible way to hear your name attached to a quality or a characteristic or an action, isn't it? What kind of an epitaph, what kind of a phrase would be used for one of us? Well, I don't know. I hope it would be nicer than that. But you know, I wonder, in fact, I don't even wonder, I believe I know that Jesus, Jesus would not have defined him that way. Jesus would not have defined him by his failure. How do I know that? Because he didn't define anybody else by their failures. You know, the other guy in that Holy Week drama who failed so publicly and so miserably was Simon Peter. Simon Peter, not once, not twice, but three times on that fearsome night before the crucifixion, denied even knowing Jesus. Now that doesn't rise quite to the level of betraying him for 30 pieces of silver, but it is a pretty big scandal. And you and I know something else. We know that Judas, in his grief after the temple authorities used him and threw him out. He went out and hanged himself. Simon Peter, the night of the crucifixion, the night after, I don't think he could have slept a wink, do you? But then comes the powerful Easter story of resurrection. And before you know it, Simon Peter standing at the lake shore up in Galilee talking to the risen Jesus. And I want you to notice what happens in the last chapter of John. Jesus does not condemn him. He doesn't indict him. He simply asks a question. Do you love me? And the Bible tells us he asked it three times. Is that a, a way of comparing that to the threefold denial? Some people think it is. Is it a way of saying, Peter, are you sure you love me? Well, three times Peter says yes. And the last time he says, you know I love you. What do you think Jesus would have said to Judas? I have a strong hunch he would have asked the same question. 
You see, what I want us to see is Jesus does not, uh, does not convict us because of our failure and does not define us because of our failure. Jesus sees beyond our failure and sees our opportunity to do something for his church and his gospel. Simon Peter went on to be the leader of the early church. And I know his story must have resonated with so many people who had failed, but they could get back up and keep trying. None of us, absolutely none of us has failed as miserably as Judas or Simon Peter. And every one of us can hear the voice of Jesus just asking one question, do you love me? I wonder how we could answer that today. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you that you forgive us for even those worst moments of our lives, the moments that maybe we haven't even forgiven ourselves for yet. Allow your grace to overwhelm us today. Allow us to love you with all our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our strength. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. I hope to see you Sunday. Thank you.